Jason Whitlock. Hello, Jason. How are you? Glenn, awesome introduction. I appreciate that. Thank you. You bet. Um, I, and I want to talk to you about some of the things that you're going through uh, right now and the things that you're discovering and things that you're doing this summer. Um, I'm going to be joining you on one of your events that I, I think is just so worthwhile. But first, can I take you to the news that I have not been following, and I don't know if this is important or not. P. Diddy. I don't know what the hell is going on with him, but I'm hearing talk like he is the new Jeffrey Epstein. Can you tell me this story? Yeah, let me tell you why it's important for you and your audience. And we we unpacked this last week on my show, trying to get a broader perspective on what's going on with Diddy. And it's about the music industry, and it's about uh, the push for nihilism and how they have manipulated uh, our entire American culture to be more nihilistic. And they've done Mm -hmm. it with music, and hip-hop is at the forefront of that. And so Diddy is someone of marginal talent who's been installed (laughs) and who has been allowed to use the music industry to uh, sexually compromise young people, celebrities, other entertainers, politicians, or, or, or whatever. But it's like this whole, the part of the realization and understanding we have to come to is like everything in culture. Tucker Carlson talked about this a couple of weeks ago about just like architecture and how yeah, everything. it's not the same as it used to be. And so in all the arts, they're trying to push us towards a nihilistic worldview, and they've done that with hip-hop, and and P. Diddy is one of the faces and most powerful people in Uh, hip-hop. But again, as I expounded on, it's not just Diddy. It's like BlackRock and Vanguard. They actually own the music industry and and control the music industry. Wait, 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 wait. The investment houses of BlackRock and Vanguard, they own the music industry? Absolutely. From Sony Music Group to every, they're, they're the most invested in the music industry. They're the most, through Viacom, they own BET, MTV, VH1. They're in control of the music wow. industry. And, and they also own the majority, the overwhelming majority of stock in the private prison industry. Uh, I think the stock name is called CXW now. It's called Core Civic. It used to be called uh, Corrections Corporations of America, and then they transitioned the name. And so this whole hip-hop deal was about creating a culture where like, prison is a rite of passage and corruption and criminality is just part- built into the system, and it feeds the prison system, the private prison industry, and it's exploded. But more than anything, it's promoted a nihilistic view, and a view that life really has no meaning, and it's disconnected us from our moral principles and religious principles. That's what Diddy is the face of, and that's why I'm glad he's getting his comeuppance, and I'm, I hope that they don't do a cover-up and not expose everyone involved because and it's not just hip hop music has been headed this direction and pushing oh, us yeah. in a nihilistic direction for a long time yeah. and this needs to be discussed and exposed that this isn't limited to black kids or the urban inner city the way they pushed hip hop and made it the most popular music in the world and they pushed it in sports and pushed it everywhere it's affecting everyone I have to tell you, they're doing it now to uh, the last bastion of decency in entertainment, and that is um, in Nashville, country music. It is going woke and ugly, and you know, I, I they are they have just infested everything, and they're tearing it apart. I mean, you listen to popular music now. I mean, imagine the last time we went through this you know, revolution kind of spirit with Marxism. So back in the 60s, and you had artists that were singing really uplifting stuff. Some of it was garbage, but some of it just, it was an empowering movement. 
You listen to music now, and it is disgusting. It is all about, I mean, I challenge you to listen to especially hip-hop and, uh, and some popular music of that genre. And I challenge you to find a song that isn't talking about somebody's butt or putting something in somebody's butt. It, I, it, it's incredibly degrading. Glenn, for someone like myself who's 56 and who grew up on R&B music, yeah. R&B music used to be a lot of romantic love songs. Yeah, yeah. You can't find in R&B or hip-hop, love is not remotely on the table. No. I mean, it just, not. you go through the Billboard Top 100, love, anything about love not remotely on the table. If you want to listen to music that promotes love between a man and a woman, you got to go listen to music made in the 60s, 70s, I know, I know. and 80s. It's I know. just disappeared. This, this is intentional. They've just removed love from the culture. So, Jason, what is, what is Diddy um, accused of doing? Uh, you know, drugging, raping, uh, young girls and young men uh, sexually compromising and leveraging uh, the entertainers that work for him, uh, employing a cleanup man named Fahid Muhammad, who, if you're familiar with the TV show Ray Donovan, if you ever watched yeah. that on Showtime, mm. uh, this guy would go up and clean up the crimes that Diddy and or any of his entertainers were involved in. And there's these two lawsuits, one that he settled, but the second one with this Rodney Jones that he hasn't settled. There's allegations of shootings and murders and things like that that have been cleaned up uh, by this guy. Uh, How does that happen? How does that happen? (laughs) It's not my world, so I would only be speculating. But, yeah, uh, these are the types of allegations uh, that have been going on. And, again, Diddy sexually compromising uh, forcing his entertainers into having sex with him, with men, with women, uh, the, and then using his house and cameras everywhere in his house. So when he would throw these parties, if there were celebrities or politicians or prominent entertainers there, he'd have everything recorded. And so wow. those people would be compromised. And so, yeah, they're calling him the Jeffrey Epstein of the music industry. And I don't think it's a, a, a bad label, uh, but again, this is th- Diddy comes from a compromised background. His father was a drug dealer uh, who, in the seventies, who got busted and I think snitched on some other drug dealers and then got mm-hmm. murdered when Diddy was just three years old. And, and so, what the rap music world really, uh, where they fish for talent is in all these broken, compromised, dysfunctional homes. And so Diddy likely uh, sexually abused when he was a child, uh, and obviously father mm. murdered, didn't mm. grow up in an ideal environment. He'll do anything for money. And, and that's why he gets installed and promoted and put in a position of power, because he's easily controlled, because he comes from a background where the values just weren't instilled. And again, this whole nihilistic view of the world and all the the the, the breakdown of the nuclear family that they've pushed, they're destroying the family structure so that our kids are more vulnerable and yeah. will be more easily seduced into so, wickedness and a lack of morality. So last question, and then i got to take a quick break and then come back because I want to talk to you about your event. But um, why now? Why has he gotten away with this for so long, and now it's just coming out? That's a great question, Glenn. Uh, and I, I would, my only explanation at this point is that I think we're in that time where. So, uh, my biggest these things are crumbling. Is, yeah, my biggest explanation is that I don't think we fully recognized all the dominoes that Trump knocked over. Yeah, just yeah. by saying fake news and making us like willing to question everything. And yes. what Trump has done is legitimize the so-called conspiracy theorists. So now the public, I think, is more ready for the truth. 
And people are, you know, filing lawsuits. And because there's independent media and there's those of us that have had the scales taken off our uh, eyes, we're willing yeah. to talk about it and expose it. But, but it's again, I don't want to make too much of Trump, but he's really consequential in oh, yeah. giving all of us the courage to say, man, we got to look at things in an yeah. honest fashion. Yeah. So uh, Jason is doing his second year of uh, roll call. He's uh, doing a roll call, a call to all men to step into the role of men and, you know, learn how to be a man and what that means in today's world. It doesn't mean an alpha male. It means somebody who uh, understands the the, um, righteous dominion that a man has um, and and the important role that they play along with women and their righteous dominion. Um, and so this is happening uh, where, again, uh, in, in Nashville, Jason? Here in Nashville, uh, Friday, May 31st, and Saturday, June 1st. Uh, Glenn, my vision on this uh, is, is I'm trying to create an event where men come together across our little petty differences, skin color. Some of us may be of different faith denominations, but we're all believers in God, and we all have to understand, and this is why I'm so pleased that you're coming to speak, is because this year we're focusing on like trying to tell men, like, hey, there's sacrifices we're going to have to make if we want to restore this country, if we want to have a world that's better for our kids than what than what we found it. And so I don't think anybody that I know in the media space understands the sacrifices that were made to make this country great better than mm-hmm. you. And if we're not reminded like that people made incredible sacrifices for us mm-hmm. to enjoy this freedom and that means we have to make some sacrifices to protect it, yeah. restore yeah. it. And so that's what I want you to talk about, give us a bit of a historical perspective sure. on Because I think we've lost the willingness to sacrifice. I think too many of us have been enjoying what oh, we yeah. were given rather yep. than protecting what we're giving. Oh, and yeah. so whether it comes to some financial sacrifices, a smaller home, or just the willingness to stand on truth and speak out uh, and deal with the consequences and quit worrying about someone calling you racist or an Uncle Tom or a homophobe or this or that. Stand on truth. Be willing to make that sacrifice to improve this culture. Well, that is the first time I've heard, you know, because I agreed to do this, but I hadn't talked to you about what you want me to speak on. I will give you a rip-roaring uh, uh, talk on sacrifice and what it is taken to get here and what our responsibility is now. I, I, I can't wait for that. And I'm speaking on Saturday, June yeah. 1st, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, l- and- l- let me throw in one other thing, too, uh, Glenn, yeah. I forgot to mention. I partnered this year in moving forward with John Rich, the country music star. Oh, I love uh, him. Many people... No, John, big and big and rich, but he's he's yeah. made some incredible music, gospel music, Christian music, and and so the idea is that music and food are things that we can all <laughs> come together on without yes, we worrying can. about uh, <laughs> you know our differences. No, they're two things that really bring us together. It's like they've ruined sports, and now that that divides us as well. But everybody loves good music. Everybody loves good food. And we're inviting everybody that loves God to come join us. Let, let's get together. Let's prove everybody wrong, and let's prove the other side wrong, that as men, we can come together, put our differences aside, celebrate God, listen to some good music, hear some inspiring speeches, and eat and enjoy Nashville. Uh, I think it. it's going to be powerful. All right, so you can get your tickets now. There is a special price, an early bird price on them right now, but that ends this weekend midnight this sunday uh you can get your tickets bring your uh bring your son bring your friends uh it is a a weekend for men to get together and step into their roles as men 
So get your tickets now. Early bird special. They uh, will go up starting Monday. But right now you can get them at a special price. Uh, go and uh, and find that now. And I don't have the address. Where do you buy those tickets, Jason? FearlessArmyRollCall.com. Got it. Thank you.